It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. It is no longer I that live it, but Christ that liveth in me. But Christ that liveth in me, it is no longer I that liveth. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed. 
said, Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Near our blessed Lord, to the cross, where thou hast died, draw me near, near our blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side, draw me near, near our blessed Lord, to the cross, where thou hast died, draw me near. King of kings, Lord of Lord, Jesus is Lord of all. And all my life, Jesus is Lord of all. King of kings. Amen. Whenever we come together like this, we have people that are joining us for the very first time. The Lord has spoken to you, friends have invited you, and you are here in our midst for the very first time tonight. We want to recognize you, we want to bring to you our pastor's greeting. So wherever you are seated, please, you can please uh, rise up for recognition coming for the very first time, please rise up for recognition. You are welcome in Jesus' name. This is the Palai Bible Church, Headquarters Church. It is the pleasure of our pastor and the whole congregation to welcome you to this Bible study. Our ushers and leaders are very close by you. They will give you some leaflets to fill. Please collect those leaflets. Write the information, fill the information there properly, and you may please be seated after you have done that. Weekly meetings, announcement. By the special grace of God in this church, we have three important meetings. On Mondays like this, we come together for systematic and expository study of God's word. We are specially privileged to be taught by our Father and the Lord every Monday either here in the headquarters church or in our respective districts and the location. As you come by 6 o'clock every Monday, you will surely be blessed in Jesus' name. Thursdays, we have revival and evangelism training services in our respective districts and locations. And uh, it's always also an enriching time. The time for the revival hour is 6 p.m., in our respective districts and locations. By the grace of God on Sundays, we come together for the worship uh, services in our districts or our headquarters church here as uh, may be our turn to be here. We want to encourage us to please uh, be at all these meetings and the Lord will continue to bless us. The, for the Sunday worship, the time is 7.45 a.m. You will surely be blessed as we come for all these meetings in Jesus' name. Friend, let's rise up upon our feet. Even as we sing from our gospel hymns and songs, M258, Oh, to be like thee, oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. Gladly I'll forfeit all of us treasures, Jesus, thy perfect likeness to wear. Oh, to be like thee, full of compassion, Loving, forgiving, tender and kind, helping the helpless, sharing the fainting, seeking the wandering sinner to find. 
Oh, to be like thee, lowly in spirit, holy and harmless, patient and brave, meekly enduring cruel reproaches, willing to suffer others to save. Oh, to be like thee, Lord, I am coming now to revive, to receive the anointing divine. All that I am and have, and have I am bringing. Lord, from this moment all shall be thine. Oh, to be like thee, while I am pleading, pour out thy spirit, fill with thy love. Make me a temple meet for thy dwelling. Fit me for life and heaven above. Oh, to be like thee. Oh, to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, pure as thou art. Come in thy sweetness. Come in thy fullness. Stamp thy own image deep on my heart.
today we are going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we reach together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The third book of Moses, called Leviticus. Chapter 7. Likewise, this is the law of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, shall they kill the trespass offering, and the blood thereof shall he sprinkle round about upon the altar. And he shall offer of it all the fat thereof, the rump, and the fat that covereth the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the caul that is above the liver, with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a trespass offering. Every male among the priests shall eat thereof. It shall be eaten in the holy place. It is most holy. As the sin offering is, so is the trespass offering. There is one law for them. The priest that maketh atonement therewith shall have it. And the priest that offereth any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he hath offered. And all the meat offering that is bacon in the oven, and all that is dressed in the frying pan and in the pan, shall be the priest's that offereth it. And every meat offering, mingled with oil and dry, shall all the sons of Aaron have, one as much as another. And this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer unto the Lord. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil, and unleavened wafers anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour fried. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. And of it he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for an heave offering unto the Lord. And it shall be the priests that sprinkleth the blood of the peace offerings. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow, or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that he offereth his sacrifice, and on the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be eaten at all on the third day, it shall not be accepted neither shall it be imputed unto him that offereth it. It shall be an abomination, and the soul that eateth of it shall bear his iniquity. And the flesh that toucheth any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire, and as for the flesh, all that be clean shall eat thereof. But the soul that eateth of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto the Lord, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, the soul that shall touch any unclean thing, as the uncleanness of man, or any unclean beast, or any abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which pertain unto the Lord, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Ye shall eat no manner of fat, of ox, or of sheep, or of goat. And the fat of the beast that dieth of itself, and the fat of that which is torn with beasts, may be used in any other use, but ye shall in no wise eat of it. For whosoever eateth the fat of the beast, of which men offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, even the soul that eateth it shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast, in any of your dwellings. Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, He that offereth the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto the Lord shall bring his oblation unto the Lord of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. His own hands shall bring the offerings of the Lord made by fire, the fat with the breast, it shall he bring, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before the Lord. And the priest shall burn the fat upon the altar, but the breast shall be Aaron's and his son's. And the right shoulder shall ye give unto the priest for an heave offering of the sacrifices of your peace offerings. He among the sons of Aaron that offereth the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. For the wave breast and the heave shoulder have I taken of the children of Israel from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings, and have given them unto Aaron the priest, and unto his sons by a statute for ever from among the children of Israel. This is the portion of the anointing of Aaron, and of the anointing of his sons, out of the offerings of the Lord made by fire, in the day when he presented them to minister unto the Lord in the priest's office which the Lord commanded to be given them of the children of Israel in the day that he anointed them by a statute forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, of the meat offering, and of the sin offering, and of the trespass offering, and of the consecrations, and of the sacrifice of the peace offerings, which the Lord commanded Moses in Mount Sinai in the day that he commanded the children of Israel to offer their oblations unto the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the Word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. We want to give our tithe and offering now unto the Lord. And uh, whatever we have brought to the Lord, we want to raise it up in the presence of the Lord. Tithe is one-tenth of our gross income as salary earners and one-tenth of our profit as businessmen and women. Whatsoever we add there to is our offering. Let's raise them up as we are going to pray over them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to appreciate you for this night. You have been so good to every one of us. And out of the much you have given, this token is brought for the furtherance of the gospel and to the glorification of your holy name. We're asking that all these offerings will be acceptable in your sight tonight in Jesus' name. And in return, you will bless your people. We thank you, Lord, because you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Please, the bags are being passed around. Let's drop whatever we have brought to the Lord tonight as we remain standing.
administrations from regions, states, and nations across the world.
has brought me near a God, though oft it lay through sorrow's gate, though in all the way I choose, in my way I might lose the joy. Submission to the will of him who guides me still is surety of his love revealed. My soul shall rise above this world in which I
precious mystery was hidden revealed the hope of glory now the life of god has reached me from the was imprisoned unjustly. He cried for help, but was never heard for a thick cloud covered the plea. Then came the master of ocean and sea, the one who was and is to come. Above him, the dove for a witness. Around him, guarded with power and might. Then a great voice from heaven saying, The snare is broken. Loose him and let him go. Mercy came that day. Mercy has come today. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. GCK, Global Crusade with Kumui. Live in Edo State, South South Nigeria and to the world. Different people, races and cultures via satellite and all our social media platforms. Thursday, October 26 to Tuesday, October 31, 2023. 1600 hours GMT daily with a Super Sunday service on October 29. Live at Garrick Memorial Grammar School Ground, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. There will be a special focus on teenagers, campus students, core members, and young adults. Guess no further, because it's Impact Academy Reloaded, hosting the Unstoppable Champions. And that includes every youth participant. On Saturday, October 28, 2023, all 600 hours GMT. An excellent ministry is sure for all ministers, church workers, and professionals on October 27. 30 and 31st at 600 hours GMT. All events hold at Garrick Memorial Grammar School Ground, Benin City, Edo State, Nigeria. Glorious gospel music by the GCK Global Choir. And the guest gospel minister, Jared Anderson, a Christian worship leader from Colorado, USA. This will be our song. As God's servant, the international evangelist, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, is set to touch down in Edo State and to the world, different people, races and cultures, their satellites and all our social media platforms. Get ready to experience the power of Jesus. Say, lose him and let him go. GCK. The gospel to every creature. Matthew chapter 28, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The result of that crusade, mass evangelism, soul winning, not in the number of those who raise up their hands, 
not in the number of those who are present at that crusade, of the number who are baptized. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, there are evangelists and soul winners and church leaders that think that evangelism terminates at the time you gather them together. They will be filled, and then you have a sea of heads. And we say, wasn't this a very great successful crusade? Not yet. And then when they make the altar call, and you see many hands raised up, and they say, yes, we accept. And then as you count those people, maybe they feel your decision card. After they have filled the card, and then you count and count and count, and it's difficult to finish counting. Wasn't that a great success? Not yet. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, the success of any evangelistic outreach, it's not just in gathering the people together to hear. They hear, they act on what they hear, they repent, they believe, they are integrated with the body of Christ. And then we have the privilege of teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all the way, even unto the end of the world. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go. I know we've had that before. But there comes a time in the calling of a man. There comes a time in the calling of a woman. That he has to arise and go. And it is then we know the genuineness, the authenticity of the faith and the faithfulness of such a minister. You see, while we're sitting down, coming to church, and sitting down and learning, and sitting down and listening, there's not much in that. It is when you have heard the word, and the Lord is saying, go, and then the Lord is pointing at you, go. We don't know believers by just reading the Bible, there is more. We don't know believers by just coming to church. There is more. We don't know believers by even preaching to all the people. There is more. It is when you hear the word of God and it says go and then you are able to rise up. The people that hear from the Lord go and immediately doesn't take them a day, doesn't take them a week, doesn't take them a year, doesn't take them 10 years before they go. Those are the people that God reckons with. Go ye into all the world. Go ye into all nations and preach the gospel to every creature. Did I tell you that the crusade does not finish at the point of raising of the hand, at the point of shouting and praising God because of healing. We must measure the success of the outreach, of the crusade, of the mass evangelism, of the soul winning by the people that are baptized according to the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 1, I'm reading to you from verse 14. I am debtor, both to the Greeks, this commitment. I am debtor, both to the Greek and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So much, as much as in me is, I am ready, that's commitment. I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. That's what translates into commitment in our lives. That's number one, I know I'm a debtor. I owe a debt to the sinners. I ought to pay. And then number two, in verse 15, I am ready. I'm ready to do it. And then number three, in verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I am better, I'm ready, I'm not ashamed. And when you can say that from the depth of your heart, and then you rise up, and then you go forth and you go out to do what the Lord is calling you and calling me and calling us together to do. 
then it shows our commitment to that faithfulness and fruitfulness in evangelism. I would rather go to heaven. But I see the need. A lot of people to be saved. A lot of people to know what it means to actually love the Lord and what it means to give themselves to the Lord. Therefore, I would rather stay. The Lord is challenging you today. And it's calling you to commitment. Let's rise up and pray. The Lord is calling us to commitment. And he's saying, I've given it all. I've given it all. I've given it all for thee. What are you willing to give for me? We have had the charge. We need to rise up now and pray. Let's rise up. Let's all rise up. And call upon the name of the Lord. And say, Lord, I offer myself. Commitment, I offer myself. Consecration, dedication for this assignment. I will go. I will preach the gospel. I will go. I will preach the gospel to every creature. We are to preach in all the nations, wherever you are at any given time. Preach the gospel to every creature. This is the Lord's command. We must all obey, every one of us. Let's pray. We will not just stop at holding programs and uh, counting decision slips, counting raise hands. No, we will not stop there. We will preach the gospel, we will bring souls into the kingdom, and we will baptize them. We will disciple them. We will teach them to observe all things whatsoever the Savior, our Lord, has commanded us. No looking back. We will teach them to observe all things. That's discipleship. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever our Lord has commanded. Teach them to follow Christ, to dedicate themselves to the Lord, to obey the Lord, to be faithful to the Lord. That requires commitment and faithfulness on our part so that we can impart the same thing to all the converts. Let's pray. Lift up your voice and pray. And say, Lord, help me. Help me to be committed. Help me to be dedicated. Help me to be faithful. And through my commitment, my faithfulness, my dedication, all the converts that come in, all the converts that I'm to follow up, all the converts that I'm to disciple, they will follow also in total obedience, commitment, dedication, zeal for the master. They will see our own zeal, our own faithfulness, our own commitment, and that will stir them up also to be faithful, to be committed, to be zealous for the master. Not just hearing, not just raising hand, I believe, I believe, but they will come, they will yield, they will surrender, they begin to obey the word of the Lord, living the holy life, the righteous life, the godly life, every day. We are commanded to go, we need to go. Preach, we need to preach. And then teach them to observe all things, whatsoever Christ has commanded. Remember, we are all debtors. That's commitment. We are debtors. We owe the debt we must pay. We need to go and pay our debt. And we must be ready all the time, constantly ready. Ready in the day, ready in the night, ready at home, ready everywhere we go. Ready in our neighborhood, ready in the place of work, ready in the marketplace, ready everywhere to give the gospel, the saving gospel to every creature, everywhere, every time. Commitment, ready all the time. And we must not be ashamed. We must not be ashamed. Christ gave his whole all. He left all his glory in heaven, came down to this world, suffered and died to save us from sin. Nothing is too much for us to sacrifice for this Savior who loved us so much and died for us. Pray and say, Lord, I will not be ashamed. Why should we be ashamed of preaching the gospel? We will not be ashamed. We will not be afraid. We will not be intimidated. We will not be cowards. We will be bold. Pray for the spirit of boldness. Courage, boldness, commitment, zeal, dedication, so that everywhere, every time, we will be ready, eager, zealous to preach the gospel. 
We are debtors, we must pay our debt. We are debtors, we must pay our debt and pray. From today, Lord, help me. I will pay my debt. I will go everywhere proclaiming the gospel. And then as the souls are saved, as they come in, I will disciple them. I will teach them to observe all things that you have commanded. I will follow them up and teach them obedience to the word of God. Teach them righteousness. Teach them holiness. Teach them consecration, service unto the Lord. Pray. The Lord has called us. The Lord has commissioned us. He has given us the assignment, the great commission. We must not fail. We shall not fail. Pray, and the Lord will help every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all you have taught us. We pray, O oh Lord, we will be committed. We will be zealous. We will be dedicated. We will be faithful. We will not be ashamed. We will see ourselves as, debt as debtors, and we will go and discharge our duty. We will pay our debt in Jesus' name. Give us the boldness, the courage, the zeal, and the grace to do all you want us to do every day, everywhere, preaching the gospel, winning the souls, and discipling them. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for your people. Thank you for the happy people, joyful people. Thank you, Lord, for the excitement we have coming to your word. And we're asking tonight, Lord, that we reach every life with your word in Jesus' name. Bless your people here. And everywhere we're hearing the word study together, bless everyone in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, Lord, you turn us from defeat to victory. And Lord, we pray you make us one. Your spirit make us one. Your grace make us one. Your power make us one. And we go on together united. We're going to succeed in Jesus' name. I will pray that you bring us to that heavenly home, paradise, heaven, eventually in Jesus' name. Amen. Confirm your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're coming to John chapter 17. In John chapter 17, we're learning tonight from verse 20 all through to verse 26. John chapter 17, reading from verse 20. It says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all, that they all, that they all, all the believers, all real children of God saved, now getting sanctified, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, verse 23, and thou in me, that they may be one, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me, Father. I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. Where is he? Where are you going? Well, be there in Jesus' name. That they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world, O righteous Father. The world has not known thee. But I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me, and I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. As you look at those uh, verses, you see, verse 20, it says, Neither pray for these alone. What does that mean? He was praying, look at verse 9. In verse 9, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. He was praying for his immediate disciples, those who are before him. And now, at the end of that prayer, praying for their sanctification, praying for the second work of grace in their hands.
has. He said, I'm not just praying for these 12 alone. I'm not praying for these immediate disciples alone. I am praying for other people. I'm praying for those who will hear my word through them and believe me through them and get saved through them. That means he was praying for all the Christians, all the believers that will come after that time. And then he goes on to say that he was praying so that when they were sanctified in verse 21, that they all may be one. What he meant by that is they all, the believers of that time and the believers of this time, the believers of the first century and the believers of every century that followed, that they all may be one. Those foundational believers and those of us who are coming in at this final age of the time, it says that they may all be one as a father at in me and I in thee. It wasn't talking of a union. There is a union. What, you, what union means is that you are the way you are and the way I am and then we have a union together. Some togetherness physically we're together but in heart we're not together. In mind we're not together. In doctrine we're not together. In experience we're not together. In attitude we're not together. It's just a union. It's an association association of you know this one is doing that this one is doing that and then association affiliation together but was talking about unity and it says that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us not one outside us not one, some of them are with the Pharisees, not in Christ. Some of them are with the Sadducees, not in Christ. And some of them are with, you know, whatever, uh, paths of darkness, and not in Christ, but one in us. That is, a work had been done in them. They were saved, and all the things of sin, evil, evil things, they'll be taken away. And it says that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Tonight, we are looking at the message, uh, the glorious prayer privilege of sanctified believers in Christ. The glorious privilege of sanctified believers in Christ. Sanctified believers in Christ are highly favored by Christ. The Lord has pleasure in them. And they are honored, they are blessed, and they are made useful. It says when they are sanctified and they come together and they are united as the Father and the Son are united, the world will believe. They will attract the world. They will draw the world into the kingdom. They will be useful. The privilege we have as sanctified believers, very many. Number one, there's a privilege of purity. It purifies the heart, it sanctifies the heart, and it makes the heart holy. Number two, there is the priestly prayer. That is, is our high priest, and because we belong to him, the privilege we have is that he prays for us as our high priest. Not only that, number three, there's partnership. Now, because we agree together, we're united together. There is this partnership with the Lord. Number four, there is a preference. He prefers his people. He loves the fellowship of his people. He thinks about us first. In fact, the Bible calls us the bride of Christ. And as the husband will think about the wife, the first person in his life that will think about the same thing Christ thinks about the believers. And especially when we're sanctified, there is a preference for us. Number five, there is protection. It says, I've kept them when I was with them. Now, Holy Father, keep them from evil. And now he prays for our sanctification. And then number six, there is progress. Because it says, through them, the world will come into the kingdom. And the work of God will prosper in our hands like the work is going to prosper in your hand. And then eventually there is paradise. Look at, look at verse 24 there. In verse 24, it says, Father. I will, I desire, I want, and I want this, I decree that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me, for thou loved me before the foundation of the world. You see what Jesus Christ was doing, he was lifting us up. 
he was raising us up and he wanted us to have a great privilege jesus christ our lord jesus christ our savior jesus christ our sanctifier prayed and made adequate provision for the sanctification of all believers who had been saved there is first of all salvation in fact he told his own disciples all those 70 when they returned he said rejoice not because the evil spirits are subject unto you but rejoice because your names are written in heaven not only that he sent them out to go and preach repentance he couldn't have sent them out to go and preach repentance if they had not repented these ones were already saved he said they're not of the world even as i am not of the world but then he prayed for another thing now saved there's still something more converted there's still something more born again there's still something more your name in the book of life in heaven there's still something more and that's what we're looking at he prayed for their sanctification it's an experience of the christian life subsequent to salvation salvation is the foundation salvation is the force and then there is sanctification a second work of grace what does that do it brings a deeper inner humility when somebody is sanctified there's a deep humility and meekness within him not only that it brings a deeper inner holiness there, there is holiness when you are born again you know? all the things you were doing before that were not right you have turned away from them but now you are sanctified and from the inside there's a deeper holiness and there is honesty honesty you see when you are sanctified dishonesty will not have any shade and any size in your life at all there's humility there is a holiness there is a, there is a honesty there's a happier home when you're sanctified show me a sanctified husband a sanctified wife living together there'll be unity among them they'll be happy there'll be peace between them they'll not be thinking of you know i'm going to pack out i'm going to divorce i'm going to do this and that no when sanctification comes it removes all those things that smell of adamic nature there's a happier home there's a higher honor higher honor heaven honors you and the people who know your life they respect you because they can see the transparency there there's heaven mindedness heavenly mindedness what is sanctification because you're seeking things above now not things on earth you want to impress heaven you want to please heaven you want to please the almighty god and then there is heavenly hope when there is sanctification because they say follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord and because you know by the grace of god you are saved by the grace of god you are sanctified when you hear of the rapture you are not afraid when you hear of death you are not afraid you know sudden death will be sudden glory and that if jesus will come at any time your hope is in heaven and because of that heavenly hope you're always happy and joyful as we look at the passage we're looking at today it's in john chapter 17 from verse 20 to verse 26 the glorious privilege of sanctified believers in Christ. There are three parts we're going to uh, deal with as we look at this passage. Number one, the pattern of unity for the sanctified bride. The pattern of unity for the sanctified bride. Point number two, the purpose and usefulness of sanctified believers. You are going to be more useful. The purpose and the usefulness of sanctified believers. Point number three, the potentials and uniqueness of sanctified brethren. The potentials and the uniqueness of sanctified brethren. We come to point number one. In point number one, the pattern of unity for the sanctified bride. We're coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. We're reading from verses 20 to 22. Verses 20 to 22. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me 
it through their word. The question is, what name can you give to those people? Look at the disciples of Christ before him. And look at all the people who are going to believe after they give us the word. And God has chosen them. He used Matthew, wrote uh, Matthew, and wrote, somebody wrote Mark, and then Luke wrote Luke, and Acts of the Apostles, and John, and then Paul wrote the Romans, and then all the other epistles. Through them, and through what they are reaching, we have come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the name we're given, we're the bride were the bride of Christ or the wife of Christ and the wife of Christ he wants the body to be united he wants the bride to be united and look at this in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 the way he refers to us as a united body the way he refers to us as the bride of Christ the wife of Christ in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2 it says for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ that's talking about the body of Christ that's talking about all the believers that's talking about the people they are chaste they're holy they're pure they're sanctified, and it says now they're virgin unto the Lord. Come to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 23. Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 23, talking about the church, talking about the bride. And it says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. It's making comparison. It says, you see husband, you see wife, and then you see Christ, you see the church. He is the savior of the body. Verse 24, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. You see, he's talking about husband, he's talking about wife, talking about Christ, talking about the church, telling us that the church is the wife, is the bride of Christ. And then he gave himself for it why did he give himself for the church verse 26 that he might tell me sanctify sanctify and cleanse it already is the bride of Christ already is brought to Christ already he is saved but now even after that salvation Christ gave himself for the church that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself not an ordinary church not a denominational church, not a traditional church, not a ritualistic church. He might present it to himself. What kind of church? A glorious church. What does that mean? Not having sports not having wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish look at verse 32 this is a great mystery but i speak concerning christ and the church we'll come to revelation chapter 19 revelation chapter 19 talking about the church talking about the believers all together as a congregation all together as an assembly and he tells us in chapter 19 revelation chapter 19 verse 7 let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife that's the bride i pray you'll be there yeah. you'll be part of this because he saves if you are saved, I rejoice with you already. He sanctifies. If you are sanctified, I rejoice with you. You are not there. If you are not yet saved, thank God tonight salvation has come. If you are saved and you are waiting for sanctification, tonight is the night. He'll purify, sanctify you, make you holy in Jesus' name. It says, look at, look at verse, uh, look at verse 8. It says to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. This point one, the pattern of unity for the sanctified bride uh, come back to john chapter 17 john chapter 17 there are three things we'll see here number one the pattern 
Number two, the picture. Number three, the power. Number one, the pattern of the unity of the Son with the Father. The pattern. What pattern are we going to look at when he talks about unity? When he says, look at chapter 17, John chapter 17. I'm reading now from verse 21. John chapter 17, verse 21. It says that they all may be one. What pattern are we going to follow? If we're going to be all one, look at the pattern. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee. That's the pattern between the Son and the Father. The pattern that Jesus Christ has left for us is say that the Father in him and he in the father that they also may be one in us then he goes on look at verse 22 and the glory which thou givest me i have given them that they may be one even as we are one that's the pattern even as we are one when you think about believers believers in a local assembly one as Christ and the Father are one. Believers in the whole of the church, like deeper life, one, just one, united together as the Son and the Father are united. And the real believers in all denominations, the same heart, the same mind, the same doctrine, the same goal, the same pursuit, the same heaven, the same destiny, that they all may be one as the Son and the Father are one. That's the pattern. Look, at verse 23 i in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me and let's look at that pattern very well the pattern of unity the pattern of unity of the son and the father look at john chapter 5 verse 13 john chapter 5 verse 13 it says i can of my own self do nothing as i hear i judge and my judgment is just because i seek not my own will but the will of the father which has sent me that's the unity between the son and the father no argument between christ and the father and i say no insubordination between christ and the father as the father desires as the father demands so he did and so he always does and he says i seek not my own will self-will is cancelled when we're sanctified because the pattern the lord has left us is that of christ and the father we're coming to john chapter 8 verse 28 john chapter 8 verse 28 it says then said jesus unto them when ye have lifted up the son of man then shall ye know that i am he and that i do nothing of myself but as my father has taught me i speak these things that the unity between jesus and the father as the father taught him so he did as the father said what to do that's what he did well he is the son of god he is even god himself and yet and he's been from all eternity and his name shall be called wonderful his name shall be called counselor he knows the word of god in fact the pharisees were saying how knowest this man the scripture so much like this have been never learned and yet even with all he knew he could have been independent he could have said i know what to do i don't need my father to be telling me this and that at this we were being together for all eternity no the unity we're talking about the pattern is a pattern of christ and the father and it says look at verse 29 and he that sent me is with me the father has not let me alone for i do always i do how often i do i said how often I was it was there any time that Jesus said, okay, but it's too long. Let me take some vacation. Let me have some, let me have some independence from the Father. Never, never. He wanted always to be subjected and submissive to the Father because you know what? He has set the pattern for us of the unity that should be among the believers. And he said, for I do always those things that 
please him. Uh, look at First John chapter five verse seven. First John chapter five. I'm reading from verse seven. In First John chapter five verse seven, for there are three that bear records in heaven. Look at this: the Father, the Word. Who is that? Capital W. I said, who is that? Capital W the word and the Holy Ghost and these three tell me at one no disagreement no argument no fighting about anything you know? they are one no opposition and not no I'm not going to do that today we're not going to accept that today the father has been number one and the son has been number two the Holy Ghost has been number three and we're going to change it you know it's too long now and then argument never the angel